All right, Dan says he would not be surprised if Derrick Henry leads the NFL in rushing touchdowns. And I'm just going to say, I like I said, I, I didn't I didn't prepare any for today, but the two that I were thinking about were the Bills one that I mentioned earlier, and I wouldn't be surprised if Derrick Henry is the biggest bust in fantasy football. Oh, the opposite side of it. Okay, nice. Yeah. Uh, so why don't you give me your bus case first? Why? Yeah, why that? I mean, basically, I think he he has to be among the leaders. I don't know if he has to lead them, but he has to be among the leaders in rushing touchdowns, you know, to be good because he's not going to catch a lot of passes. And he's 30. How old is he? 30, 31? 30. 30? 30, 30 in January, I believe. And he has 2,000 carries. Like, this guy is clearly at the tail end of his career. I think we've seen it. The explosive plays are decreasing. And I, yeah, I just, I'm not, I don't want to bet on that old of a running back. It really, it's like it. I know Jamie's the age guy. Usually that's what he's doing with wide receivers. That's what I'm doing with Derrick Henry. I don't want to invest the top 30 pick on a 30 year old running back, which we hardly ever see success who has 2000 carries, who I think is showing signs of wearing down. Um, I think he has to get in the end zone and he's not going to catch passes. So I think he's, he has to get in the end zone a lot to be good. Yeah, my counter to that would be that if you look, at, at least for me, the two metrics that I find most sticky in fantasy football that I like to follow are yards after contact per attempt and force missed tackles per attempt. And if you look at those numbers, they didn't fall off for Derrick Henry. And so if, they, if you're projecting the fall off will come this year, and maybe it is just explosive touchdowns, I agree. He's not going to give you those, you know, he runs down, throws a defender down on the field and goes 75 yards for a touchdown, which he would do in, in you know, some of the past seasons. I don't expect that from him, but what I do expect from him is to still be a very efficient runner on first and second down in the red zone and on third downs. And he's, uh, he's going into an opportunity that Jamie kind of described earlier for me and did a great job doing with Gus Edwards and some of the players who have been in that Baltimore system, which is probably the best opportunity for scoring rushing touchdowns for any running back let's say you take Derrick Henry's name out of it right it would still we would still consider this the best opportunity for scoring rushing touchdowns for any running back besides maybe Miami and I would still put this ahead of them so now you're putting in one of the better run red zone runners in the NFL over the course of his career yes he's older but he hasn't really slowed down in that regard either in my mind when it comes to short area stuff and I think that there's a really good opportunity for him to get to 15, maybe more touchdowns. And if you're getting that amount of touchdowns, it's hard for me to see you as a fantasy bust, regardless of your low reception total. And you're not breaking off 50, 70 yard runs because there are going to be games where the Ravens have big leads and they're going to lean on the running game more so than they did last year. And obviously by bringing in Derrick Henry, they had in mind an idea that yes, we went to a pass heavy system with more 11 personnel last year, but there was clearly a little bit of a hole or a flaw in what we had with regards to we were a bit more one dimensional in the passing game and we want to get to more of a balanced offense. At least that's how I perceive it. So I think it's a very good opportunity to get those touchdowns and hard to see me. Him, it's hard for me to see him busting if he gets to double digit touchdowns, even what, uh, what was Gus Edwards finish in fantasy points per game? That's a good question, Adam. Yeah, I gotcha. He was on a per game basis. He was 22nd in non PPR 28th in full PPR and 33rd. No, sorry, 28th and half PPR, 33rd in full PPR. I mean, that's so obviously bad. he's better than than Gus Edwards. And so, you know, assuming he stays healthy, is he five touchdowns better? That's where I'm putting Gus in that. 13. Gus had 13. Gus had 13. He had just under 1,000 total yards. Right. So I would say if he stays healthy, he's probably 1,500 total yards and 18 touchdowns. That's what I, That's where I'm putting him at in that range. I don't see that personally, but. You know that you can't see thirteen hundred rushing and uh, at least said, oh oh 1,500 total yards yeah. yeah total yeah yeah sorry I could see that but if he gets so, to that range that's yeah go ahead Jamie so the thing that, and listen Adam obviously I, the age scares the hell out of me yeah um which is which is my only drawback but we've said this we said it a lot last year and 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 that's what I keep coming back to is when he was on a team that was winning when the Titans were winning games yeah he was still Derrick Henry. Right. Yeah. The Ravens are yeah. winning a lot of games, you know, and, and, or be in competitive games. They're not going to get blown out. And that was the case when the Titans were getting blown out. It was a lot of Ty J Spears. And we just didn't see Derrick Henry doing the type of things that he's capable of doing. And that game so, script's a huge factor. You know, you step into 13 touchdowns, you step into, you know, what Gus Edwards did and, and he's just better than Gus Edwards and Gus Edwards was doing that at 28, you know, so it's not like he was, you know, spring chicken either. Um, So I think it just comes down to cost and, you know, Dan is, been the guy that's taken Derrick Henry in the majority of our offseason drafts so far. I know you've kind of, you know, tried to differentiate yourself a little bit. Um, if there were real drafts, you'd probably still be taking him in every draft where he goes. <laughs> yeah. So 
when you start to get to the middle of round two, end of round two, you know, I think that's the, the spot that he is going to come into play. His ADP will probably settle somewhere around 20th overall. I think that's the right spot for him. You know, it's, it's not, it's not the worst investment, you know, when you're comparing him to, but the guy I struggle with the most is Pacheco because mm-hmm. I feel like not the same profile, but a similar profile. Like the receptions are going to be, I think what sways it in Pacheco's favor aside from age, but you're asking, you're, you're looking at a guy that you want to score a lot of rushing touchdowns and Henry has a better chance to do that. Now Pacheco will probably have maybe 300 yards more receiving if, if he stays in this role, maybe more. Um, I, I don't know where the, the ceiling lies in terms of that, but I lean toward youth a little bit. So I, I take Pacheco first, but those are the two guys to me that are comparable. You know, it's different than James Cook. It's different than Rashad White. It's different right. than HN. If you want to put him in this category, you know, it's just different. Um, but yeah, I think Henry is going to have to have 15 plus rushing touchdowns to justify taking him round two. And clearly there's an opportunity for him to do that. Yeah, I actually, to be fair, I, I would not be surprised if Dan's scenario is, is right. Or mine. I mean, I feel like yeah, he's a guy with, with big outcome. If he if he scores ten touchdowns or less, he's a bust. Yeah, probably yeah. for where he's being drafted, definitely. 